Welcome back, everyone. Um, we are in section 11.3, which is the integral test, which will spawn something called a P test. Um, we'll get to that. Um, here's the idea. Um, we have a function, a summation, a series that looks like this, and we'll come back to that. But in this case, the P in this case is two. We just wanna introduce that idea. And when we start adding these up, one over one squared is one, one over one, uh, two squared is one fourth, one over three squared is one ninth, one sixteenth, and so on. And you can see as we increase in and we're adding them up, you can see we're getting closer and closer and closer to a specific number. So here we have an infinite series, an infinite series, and you can see that we are adding up an infinite number of pieces and we're still converging to a single value that we're getting closer and closer to. Now, this is all specific and um, our integral test when we, when we get there, once again, will help us to figure out if it's convergent or divergent. Now, I wanna be clear, most of the tests from now on, in fact, I think the rest of them, do not, if it is convergent, does not tell us what it converges to. We can get a vague outline idea of what it converges to, but again, until we iterate all the way to infinity, we won't have that exact value. Now, I wanna point out in this case, P is two. And we can see that P is two. And in this next case, P is one half. So root n equals n to the one half, which means P in this case is one half. And we're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on that because when P is two, we're converging to a specific value. When P is one half, you can see as we iterate, that sucker is going off to infinity which means they're, it's divergent. So in this case, it is convergent. In this case, it is divergent. And again, keeping an eye on the P, P is two in this case, and it's one half here. And we will address that a little bit later. So let's introduce the integral test. So there are three things that we need to keep in mind when we are doing the integral test. So we're gonna take a function f that is continuous, positive, meaning bigger than zero, and decreasing, meaning each um, value of x as x gets larger, y is getting smaller, but everything is positive. So it's above the x-axis. Now, the big thing here is this. We are gonna take our a sub n in our summation and turn it into, from a discrete function into a continuous function. The reason being is we can't do integral, integrals on discrete functions at this level. So here's the idea. Turn a sub n into an analog of f of x now it needs to be continuous positive and decreasing from one to infinity. Now, to be clear, it doesn't have to be one. It can start wherever it needs to start. If it can't start at one because we're dividing by zero, we're taking the square root of a negative or logarithm of, of uh, something that's inappropriate, then we can start it wherever we need to start it. But we're just gonna assume the default is gonna be one. And if this integral is convergent, then this summation is also convergent. Again. All of these need to be addressed before we even start this. If one of these does not hold true, then we, all that means is that we can't use the integral test. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, conversion or divergent. It has to do with this test is an inappropriate test if any one of these three conditions are not met. If this integral is divergent, meaning it goes to um, uh, more than one specific value or to infinity or negative infinity, then we say that the overall is divergent. So let's jump into it. In this case, I'm gonna let f of x be one over x squared plus one. And you can see I've turned it from a discrete function, 
where n is one, two, three, four, five, to a continuous function where x is one, 1.0001 and every number in between those two numbers and every number off to infinity um, as we're looking at this. And because x is being squared and we're only dealing with real numbers and we're adding one to that, that denominator is going to get very large very quickly. So right away we can see that this function is continuous. It's positive because x is being squared all the time here. And it's decreasing because as the denominator gets large, the whole function gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, all that means is I'm allowed to now use the integral test. So let's do the integral test. And I should specify it's continuous positive and decreasing as x goes from one to infinity. And we're going to go from one to infinity of one over x squared plus one dx. And this becomes, uh, this is of course is an um, improper integral. And hopefully we know that this becomes inverse tangent at this point of x. And <clears throat> we end up with uh, the limit as t approaches infinity of inverse tangent t minus inverse tangent of one. Now, one of the nice things about inverse tangent is as t goes to infinity, inverse tangent goes to pi over two. If you take a look at the graph, uh, it's, it's uh, bounded by pi over two and negative pi over two at the bottom. Now, inverse tangent of one is actually pi over four. If you look at the um, 45, 45, 90 degree um, triangle, special triangle, and this gives us pi over four. No problem. So let's move on to our next problem. And number two, test this one here. Well, I'm going to let f of x be one over x cubed, which Hopefully we know is x to the negative third, which is going to be a great analog for our discrete function here. And because x is going from one to infinity, this will always be positive. It's continuous. I'm not hitting zero, so I'm not dividing by zero. And it is uh, decreasing because as the denominator gets larger and larger and larger, the whole thing gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is um, continuous, decreasing and positive on x from one to infinity. So we can apply the integral test. And once again, it's an improper integral because of the infinity. And we are going to apply the power rule here. I want to put limit as t goes to infinity. And this is going to be negative three plus one. That's going to give us a negative one half x to the negative two power which if I rewrite it, I can even put the negative one half out in front. So we get negative one half limit as t goes to infinity of one over t squared 
minus, and then one squared is one, of course. This part here goes to zero. And here we have negative one half times negative one, so this is just one half. No problem. All right, let's see what we get here. So once again, I'm gonna let f of x be two over five x minus one. And this function, once again, because x is going to be um, one to infinity, it's continuous, right? I'm not hitting uh, oh, a one fifth. Um, it is positive because x is going to start with one. Um, and it is also decreasing because as x gets large, we're good. Now I wanna point out at x equals one fifth, we have a problem. But because we're starting at one, we're okay, we're good to go. So it is continuous, positive and decreasing for x from one to infinity. We need to check that each time, that's, that's important. So let's do this, from one to infinity, two over x minus one dx. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the two out. And when we integrate that, we're gonna get an extra five in the denominator. So that's gonna actually be two fifths. If you wanna do a u substitution to see where that comes from, that's fine. That's gonna give me ln five x minus one from one to t. And that's gonna give us ln of five t minus one minus, and I put a one in there, that's gonna be ln of four. Notice I don't need the absolute value because four is only positive. Now here is the problem. This, as t gets large, which it's going to do, goes off to infinity. And infinity minus Natural log of four is just infinity, which means it's divergent. Now, I want to clarify something. As I go back and I look here, this is convergent. This integral is convergent. All that means is my summation is also convergent. And I wanna be clear, it's not convergent. This here summation is not convergent to pi over four. We don't know what it's convergent to, and that's okay. We don't need to know at this point what it's convergent to, but we just need to know that it's convergent. That's all that matters. That brings us to the other previous problem. All this means is that this integral is convergent. Now our, conclu our, our conclusion up here, this is convergent, this one is convergent. Therefore we can conclude is also convergent. We don't know what it's convergent to, probably not one half. And that's okay. For now, we just need to know that it's convergent. Now this one is divergent. So our conclusion is simply that our summation is also divergent. So our integral, what it converges to or does not converge to is irrelevant. We just need to know, is it convergent or divergent? 
and what it converges or diverges to, we're not totally clear. All right, next up, and this is a vital one. This brings us to our, our next big deal here, is our p-value, p-value. Which values of p is this convergent or divergent? Now, I want to point out that um, I'm going to let f of x be 1 over x to the p power. Now, to be clear, x is a variable. It changes. p is going to be a constant. It will not change. It is what it is for any given problem. Either way, as long as p is a positive value, not a neg if it's negative, then it comes up, then we can say that it is continuous, positive, and decreasing for x from 1 to infinity. And we'll talk more about the difference between p and x here in just a moment. So I can apply the, because of this, I can apply the integral test. So the integral from 1 to infinity of x to the negative p power dx. And I'm going to do this. This becomes the limit as t goes to infinity of 1 over 1 minus p x to the 1 minus p power from 1 to t. Now, you'll notice if p is 1, we have a problem. In fact, I'm hoping you can see if p is 1, we have the ln of absolute value, which is its own separate thing. We'll, we'll get to that. Now, as we plug in the values, now the 1 over 1 minus p is irrelevant to the limit. because p is a constant. And this is going to be t to the 1 minus p power minus 1 to any power. Now, 1 to any power is always just 1. So I'm just going to stop there. Now, I want to point out, as long as p is, let's formally do this. As long as that exponent is negative, that's going to converge. If that exponent is positive, as t goes to infinity, that's going to go to infinity. So 1 minus p has to be positive. And this means that p has to be less than 0. Subtract the 1, divide by negative 1. Remember, it switches the direction. And, oh, oh, 1, not 0. That's the big deal. p has to be less than 1. And so this gives us three scenarios. If P is so if P here is less than zero, so if P is negative, then that pops up. And we have a problem. So if p is less than zero, then it's divergent. If p is equal to zero, then we have ln. So if that's one over x, we have ln. Then we have a problem as well. It's also divergent. And the reason I'm making this separate is because I can't um, integrate it the same way that I did here. So if, if p is 1, then we're dividing by 0. So we end up with ln, and it is also divergent. However, the good news is that if p 
E is between zero and one. is convergent. And that is the big deal for us. That brings us to the P-series test, which is here. Now we like these because this is quick. So as long as P is bigger than one, we are good to go. So this one, convergent. Three is bigger than one, convergent. Between zero and one, divergent. Root two is bigger than one, convergent. So we like this. This is much more straightforward. So if P is bigger than one, convergent. If it's less than or equal to one, divergent. And for this one, this is gonna turn into this here. And P in this case is three halves, which is bigger than one. I was not so clear on this before. Let's just, if P is bigger than one, it's convergent. That's the takeaway from all that. The last part was right. But we like this, this is convergent. By the P series test. Now, if we break this one up, here, that, now remember that's end of the one half, so we can subtract that. One half minus two, that's gonna give us one over end of the three halves. And here's the point. Here, P is three halves, which is bigger than one. Here, P is two, which is bigger than one. So as long as both pieces converge, which they do in this case, because both P's are bigger than one, then overall it's convergent. All right, let us step back to the integral test. And for this one, we're gonna let X, uh, F of X Be this here. Now we're going to have to do a little bit more work. Um, by the way, this is positive and it is continuous on x goes from one to infinity. However, we don't know that it's decreasing. So I'm actually going to do a test for decreasing. So I'm going to take the derivative and if the slope is negative. Now this is going to give me a quotient rule here. So that's going to give me um, one over x times x minus ln of x over x squared which is uh, one minus ln of x 
over x squared. Now the denominator obviously is always going to be positive. So that slope is going to be positive, which means um, we're good there. Now we need x in this case. When x is 1, ln of 1 is 0. So I get 1. And as soon as x starts getting larger, it's going to exceed 1 in this case. And as soon as x gets larger than 1, actually, as soon as x hits 2, ln of 2, still not big enough. Let's try ln of 3. OK. So here's an interesting case. It's not always positive, the slope, which means it's not always decreasing. However, as soon as x in this case gets bigger than actually e, um, because ln of e is 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. So as soon as it's bigger than e, it's going to make that whole denominator negative. So this is going to be negative when x is bigger than e. And please note, we're going to be going off to infinity. So most of it is. So here's an interesting case. When, when x is anywhere from 1 to e, it is um, increasing. However, that added to something that is decreasing, which converges, will ultimately be decreasing. So as long as x is bigger than e, then f is decreasing. which means we can use the integral test. And I know I'm starting with one, but that's OK. And let's convert this. And I'm going to do a substitution. And note that there's my 1 over x dx, which is going to give me of u du. Now, my boundaries are going to change slightly. When x equals 1, ln of 1 is 0. And I'm going to put this as ln of t. That's going to be just fine because we're going to get one half the limit as t goes to infinity of u squared, which is ln of x squared from one to ln of t. And that, when I plug those in, gives me ln of t squared, ln of ln of t squared. Now let's rewrite that. So this gives us one half the limit as t goes to infinity of the ln of the ln of t squared minus. Now, when I plug in one there, that's zero. Zero squared is zero. And the natural log of the natural log of t, <laughs> as t goes to infinity, it slowly, slowly, slowly goes off to infinity, which means that integral is divergent, which means is also divergent. All right.
that is going to be it. Thank you very much.